Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create custom brushes and insert meshes. Okay, so this is actually about insert meshes. Uh, what we're going to do first is go down to initialize. And by the way, if you click, hold down shift and you click on these menus, they will stick. Okay, and we're just going to go to initialize and Q cube. Okay. Next, we're just going to press uh, shift F and then control W so that we have one poly group. Okay. I'm not going to get rid of those lines. I'm going to leave them as is. I'm going to press W to get the gizmo out and then just scale this. Okay just so we have a rough outline of what we want. I want to create just a, a link of chains. Okay, so I'm just going to create one chain piece and we're just going to link those together to create an insert mesh. So I'm just scaling these, okay, just with the gizmo. And next what I'm going to do is make sure that I have symmetry on by pressing X. Okay, I'm just going to get the move brush out to show you that. And then I'm going to hold down Control and click and drag. Okay, and I'm going to uh, click out of the box just to invert that. And that way we can just deal with these vertices over here. We're going to do the same thing on the sides. Just scale that, okay? Okay, so next I'm going to go to the Z modeler. And that's under B, Z, and M, okay? And next I'm just going to hold down Alt and then click and drag, okay? And that'll just highlight these areas. So Alt, click and drag for both sides. And I just want to right click and then go to um, Inset. Inset, okay, and then what I want to do is go to Polygroup All, okay. After we do that, we're just going to click and drag, left click and drag, and we can make it just a little bit thinner, somewhere around there, okay. And then we're going to right click on the face again, and we're going to go to Q Mesh, and then we're going to go to Polygroup All, okay. And then we're just going to click and drag that until we create a hole. And this is pretty much our chain link, okay. We've just got one piece of the chain. And if we press D for dynamic subdivisions, okay, you can actually see what's going on. So you can ask you, you can just say always yes. And now this is just a preview of what you will have if you subdivide this. It's not actually subdivided, it's just giving us a preview. So I'm going to press shift D to get out of that. I'm going to right click again on the edge, this time not the face, but the edge, and I'm going to select bevel. I'm going to click and drag with symmetry on. Okay, and that's going to give us a little bit of a bevel there. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Just mistakenly flip that, so just click on the blue arrow and that'll give you the front view. And if we press D again, we can get that dynamic subdivision just to give us a preview of what we'll have without actually subdividing this, okay? And I think that's good enough. Obviously, if you want the rounder chain, you don't have to do what I'm doing. But I think this looks pretty cool, so I'm just going to keep it this way. Okay, next I'm going to press Control D to divide this, not uh, D, but Control D, and then I'm going to go down to Geometry and Delete Lower. So we just have one subdivision. And next I'm going to press Control W, that way we can have uh, one polygroup. I'm going to press W to get out our gizmo. I'm going to hold down Control and click and drag, that way we duplicate this. I'm going to switch Symmetry off, and then hold down Shift and rotate. That will rotate in increments, okay, so 90 degrees. We sort of make sure that it's roughly where the chain should be. Okay, so next I'm going to press Control Shift and drag, and then Control Shift A to grow that. I'm going to Control Click out of there to mask, and then Control Click out again to invert the mask. Okay, and then again get out the gizmo, and then Control Click and drag. So we get a duplicate of this piece. That was kind of fast, but as long as you know how to mask, you should be fine. Okay, next I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. Okay, just Control Click and drag down, so we duplicate that piece. Okay, with the gizmo. And I'm going to get rid of the gizmo by pressing Q. And then I'm going to click out, Control click out, so we have the mask on the bottom ring. And I'm going to press Control W, so that way we have three separate polygroups. Okay, we've got the top, we've got the middle piece, which consists of two links. And then we've got the bottom piece. This is very important when you're creating insert meshes. You want three pieces, top, middle, and bottom. The middle is the repeating piece. Okay, so if I just take this middle piece, that's going to be the repeating one. The top and bottom are just the end pieces. Okay, so next we're going to go to brush. Just click and drag this over just to make it easier to work with. What I'm going to do is press B for brush as well. And then I want to create an insert mesh. Okay, we want to create a new one. Okay, not append, a new one. And I'll just create one and you can see it here. It's just called brush. We haven't really customized it yet. And if we just click and drag, we have our brush, our insert mesh. But we want it to be a little bit more than that. So we're going to go over to stroke. We're going to go to curve. And then we're going to click on Curve Mode. Okay, so now we can actually click and drag this out. 
and we have our actual chain okay we can make it as long or as short as we want okay just like that and you can control the size by the actual size of the brush another thing I want to show you is the embed if we put that on zero uh, right now it's on 20 I want it on 20 but you'll see the reason why later on and I'll just show you what embed does that's under brush depth and then embed right now I do want it at 20 and again you can just customize that later on and I'll show you what what that does okay so what we're gonna do next is actually save this brush out okay because we've created it so we're gonna save it as okay and what you're gonna do is go over to your ZBrush folder and then go to Z startup and then brush presets okay and then you can save it there and that's where all your custom brushes should be that way when you move ZBrush you can just copy that folder okay and then move it so what I'm going to do next is go to our sphere okay make that a polymesh 3d and divide this up this is just extra work you don't have to follow this piece but I think it's worth it just to give it that extra piece of believability okay so I'm going to divide it up until it's about half a million polygons and I'm going to go to geometry and then delete the lower okay next I haven't changed brushes I'm just using the same brush that we have okay I'm just going to draw that out okay and I just want to show you the depth okay so there it's sitting right on the surface if I press zero on depth and I redraw that okay now you can see that it's actually gone in so that's what depth controls it controls the depth of the brush but I like this one this specific brush at 20 so I'm going to keep it there next I'm just going to draw a few of these lines here and you'll see what I'm doing in a second okay just creating a few of these chains just experimenting there Okay, this is just for preview purposes and you'll see why in a second okay so once you have something you like you can then click on select icon and as you can see it changes the preview of what we have instead of that boring uh, image you don't have to have a sphere you can just have this right and then there it is there as well so you can create whatever you want okay and I'm just gonna save this again just overwrite what we saved and that's how you create a brush or an insert mesh brush and a preview for it so now you can actually see the preview okay and if you want to create a custom brush right just a brush not an insert brush so let's say you like the clay build up brush but you want to adjust it a little bit okay maybe the focal shift a little bit down maybe you want to adjust the intensity okay but you just want to use the brush as a base okay you can do that so I'm just going to adjust all these things I'm going to go over to alpha maybe select a round alpha a softer alpha right and we can just create this and customize it as we want and again using the sphere we will create just a little bit of a preview right just to make it look fancy right that's the only reason for it we're gonna go and save as okay make sure we save this as don't save it over our clay build up okay and I'm gonna call this something like clay build up soft maybe okay and again you can customize this brush as much as you want and we're gonna click on that select icon and then save as again you don't have to do it in that order I just keep forgetting okay and one more thing I do want to show you before I head out uh, what you can do is when you restart ZBrush, right, your brushes will be here, right, as they are. You've got the normal clay build up and all our custom brushes on the bottom right there, okay, as they should be. But let's say you've created your own insert mesh, right? You've, you've done everything. You've got the three different poly groups, right? You've done all of that, and they're all welded together, okay? And now when you come and you try to insert them, okay, you create that draw, okay, you've drawn it on. And now if you zoom in, you'll notice that they're not connected, okay? They're not welded even though the mesh you created was welded it's not going to be like that here and unfortunately that's just because of a setting that we have to change it's not an, uh, a glitch or anything we just have to go down to modifiers under brush and then make sure we hit weld points okay and that's gonna not weld it for us yet we're just gonna have to redraw that and then once you redraw that you'll see that it's all been welded so that's just how you solve that problem so just in case you do create something and you run across you come across that problem that's just how you solve it and yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Um, just how to create custom brushes and create those previews because I know the previews kind of help. That's just a little bit of a bonus there. But yeah, I think that's also a good idea. And also when you download brushes and materials, that's where you save it, okay? Under Z Startup and then Z Materials and Brush Presets, okay? So it's all kept in that folder and that way you can just access them a lot easier. So whenever you reinstall ZBrush or whatever, you just know to copy those folders and all your custom brushes will be there, okay? So yeah, I hope you learned something out of this and I will see you guys in the next one.